Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and if you guys haven't heard the fabulous news, Season 10 is finally coming to a close on this Wednesday at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So that means you have a couple of days to either one, make sure you play enough games so that you don't decay, or two, just try to climb up to that next rank. And I know I'm already sounding like a hater, I know I'm already sounding like I hate Season 10, I, I'm bagging on it, which I might sound like that throughout this whole entire video, but I really want you guys to try to play and try to climb to the next rank, because you want to try to start off Season 11 on the right foot, you want to try to be motivated, you don't want to be demotivated, but that also goes with, with saying, make sure you don't play a lot to the point where you start to hate competitive at the very end, because this is the time, this is throwing season, y'all, okay, so many people just do not care, because either A, they got the rank that they want, and that in turn means they got their competitive points, or B, they, they just hate you, dog. Like, I, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> but for today's video, what I want to do was really look back at season 10, look at the faults, look at the mistakes, and really just look at the bad things that happen. Because I do this with every single season, because it seems like a lot of people just love to hate on the current competitive season. Ever since season 1 all the way to season 10, they just hate it. And I like to at least look at the possibly the good things. No, Slash, there really wasn't a lot of good things in season 10. But just try to, I guess in a sense, review it. And really just try to show you guys, yes, these were mistakes, but here are the good things and just what you need to look forward to in the next competitive season, which again, going into season 11, there's a lot to look forward to as terms of the mistakes that happen in season 10. Well, what were those mistakes? Well, the biggest mistake that I saw with season 10 is that there was a hard set meta. And I think you know where I'm going with this, but the first thing I need to say is that you don't have to play the meta to win. Really, if you're good at Overwatch, in turn, you should be able to climb. If you suck at Overwatch, in turn, you should drop in the lower ranks. Well, there's a simple variable that kind of like messes with this equation and that is a meta that is certain heroes that give you the best outcome well the certain meta in season 10 was with Hanzo and it's not like he was even the best DPS there's so many awesome DPS Tracer Genji Soldier heck even somewhat of a Farah and McCree so it's not like you have to play Hanzo to win a lot of games but it's the fact that he got changed in the middle of the season that a lot of people saw Hanzo's like yeah he's the greatest DPS I have to play like I love Hanzo like what I really saw with Hanzo is that so many Hanzo mains were kept in the closet from showing their quote unquote true potential. Now, whether they were really good or really bad, it didn't matter. They were able to come out of their Hanzo closet. <laughs> <laughs> And they were able to play their mains. Like, I know I have a personal bias against Hanzo, but in all honesty, I was happy that, you know, all you Hanzo mains were finally able to play a hero that was actually really decent. And in all honesty, Hanzo was a great DPS. But with every single Superman comes a Kryptonite, and Hanzo is no exception to this rule, because Hanzo obviously has his counters. And this is where a lot of faults started coming into play, because at least what I saw, Hanzo agreed to DPS. He was always on your team or always on the enemy team. Team. And one thing that I often saw was that even if the enemy team had a Winston, had a Zarya, had a Fair, or just had anyone that can semi counter Hanzo, they wouldn't really want to switch off. And that in turn meant that it just built up a lot of frustration in team comps that weren't organized. And this is the biggest problem. It's not even the fact that Hanzo was a great DPS. And it's not like I'm not trying to hate on Hanzo. I'm not trying to hate on any hero. But this is the biggest problem in season 10 that I found. If you were solo queuing or duo queuing, you lose. Wanna know why? Because you do not have control over the situation. Season 10 really does show how more organized teams are going to be able to win the game, but people still do not understand that. People are still hiding in Skype calls, people are still hiding in their party chats, and they make it harder on themselves to be able to do good. But then they blame their teammates because, oh, well, I'm getting kills as Hanzo, why can't we, like, because you're making the situation harder. Like, <sighs> I don't want to go on a full on rant and especially not on Hanzo because a lot of people will think that this video is just dedicated to hating on Hanzo. No, it's not. So let's backtrack a little bit. Let's go back to the original conversation of the season 10 meta. So obviously Hanzo main DPS hero. No one can really argue that. But then another meta hero because he wasn't the only meta hero was Brigida. But it's under the same fault as Hanzo. You have to be able to run a Brigida under certain circumstances, which meant you had to run a primary healer. If you only ran a Brigida or even if you ran at Brigida and Zenyatta, you are at a big disadvantage. Brigida's great, 
but only with their primary healer. So this meant if your team wasn't organized or weren't willing to work together or pretty much not in a six stack, it was going to be a hard time, dog. It was going to be really hard to try to win that game. So this meant you had to ask someone, hey, can you play Mercy? Can you play more? Or can you even play on it? Can you play someone that can constantly be giving heals? Because Brigida gives low, tiny, constant heals. Same with Zenyatta, same with Lucio. And if a team just bomb rushes you and just continues to get off a lot of damage, that actually hurt my hand. You're not going to be able to live. It's just, it's just facts. This meant two meta heroes, two amazing heroes are needing other ingredients to make this team composition really work out. And if you're able to make that team composition work out, you're going to be able to win a lot more. But that only means is if the team is willing to work together or able to just communicate. Again, this just goes to show why the looking for group feature and why playing in six stacks and playing in groups is going to be so important going into season 11 because more often than not, six stacks are going to be winning a lot more often than duo or solo queues. All because you don't have control over the game because you have five other people that aren't willing to work with you or just making it harder. Think of it like this. You're trying to make a party. You invite five of your friends to bring five things with them to really just make one cake. How about that? So you obviously have the sugar because every cake needs sugar. You have your best friend, your best friend of all time, who's bringing the flour. And then you have one friend that's also bringing Pepsi. Well, what? Well, why do you need Pepsi to make a cake? It doesn't matter. He wanted to bring Pepsi. He didn't listen to you. Why does it matter? The other friend now is bringing a microphone. What? Like, you, you get what I'm trying to... This doesn't make sense. Exactly. That's the whole point of Season 10, is that people didn't want to do what made sense. They see that the enemy team has Winston, a Farrah, a Zarya, and they're playing Hanzo. They're not in game chat. It doesn't matter because they wanted to play Hanzo. Doesn't matter, we're gonna counter it. And the gameplay you're watching, I don't know if I've been playing it in the background, but the perfect example of this I just kind of refer back to is during my funny moments actually was when we were playing Watchpoint Gibraltar. And I saw that they had a Hanzo main and they had a Genji main, or at least a Hanzo and a Genji player. So I'm like, okay, well why would I play Orisa when I can just easily play Winston, still get that added shield and also just be able to dive him. I did that, I sucked as Winston, but I still got them, and it's all just because of, well, I want to do what's best for the team. Maybe I wanted to play D.Va, but with D.Va being able to kill both Hanzo and Genji, when Winston could have done it 10 times better, you know, that's just the kind of situation that you have to look at it. But the enemy team didn't help their team out because they constantly kept dying by uh, from me as Winston until they finally realized, and it was too late at that point. They switched to Reaper, but we already have momentum, and we were able to just steamroll them. I guarantee you've been in the exact same situation, and that's the suckiest part about Overwatch. It's not like it's not even Overwatch's fault. It's just people's fault. So this is the biggest thing that I had a problem with in season ten is that it just took one idiot. It just took one stupid person to really just ruin the game. Whether it was because they weren't in game chat, whether it was because they were wanting to play the hero that they wanted, which is fine. Again, this is another thing that I feel like people are gonna kind of misconstrue is that I'm saying you can't play what you want. No, here's what I say constantly: is that when you play competitive you're putting the team before your own personal interest. Imagine if you went into the MLB. Every single person would want to play shortstop. But what if your strengths are at left field? They're going to put you at left field. That doesn't mean that you're going to try to play short because they're going to kick you out. Well, in here, again, it's the same competitive environment. You're going to do what's best for the team. And so that in turn means that sometimes their personal interest will be overshadowed with what the team needs. So sometimes if the enemy team has that Winston, has that Farah, has that Diva, just has heroes that can easily counter your Hanzo, maybe you should think twice about continuously playing Hanzo. If you want to play Hanzo at the beginning, that's fine. But realize this, Overwatch is a game that's based on switches, and Overwatch is a game that if you constantly are one-upping the enemy team, more than likely you should be able to win the game. But it's just that lack of commitment or just that that mindset that so many people are missing that whenever it comes to making a team comp with people that actually do try or are, are wanting to put the team before them, it makes it so hard for them to try to control the game, try to control the situation. But want to know who does have control of the game? People that are willing to work together or be people that already made a team and are already going in competitive. So that's why I said looking for group feature is going to be so important because you're going to have more control of the game and if you lose, which 
which is going to happen, it's more than likely because the enemy team was just better. Because you can, can easily tell the teammates, hey, let's switch off the Hanzo. And I keep, I know I keep mentioning Hanzo, but he's just the most common DPS in Season 10. It's not like I'm intentionally trying to, tra try to hate on him, but you're able to tell your Hanzo player, hey, they have Winston, we should probably play Reaper right after you die. And then once he dies, okay, screw your ultimate, we got to play Reaper so that we can easily move this point. And then once you kill the Winston, more than likely Winston's going to switch. You know, it's just a chess game at that point. You want to try to be in it for the long haul and not just constantly just use one piece. You don't want to constantly be using the horse piece. If that makes any sense, I really hope it did. Really, the whole point of this video was to look at the mistakes of Season 10, and it was that there was a hard set meta that worked if it took a lot of cooperation, but just takes a couple of idiots to not want to cooperate or even care for it to fall apart. But then when it, those idiots saw that it was falling apart, more often than not, they saw that, oh, well, no one else is trying. Why should I even try even more? So they switch to Torbjorn and do the opposite and just start jumping off the cliff, which at least what I saw ha happen a lot. And then soon enough, the looking for group feature will make it so that those players will play with other players that just don't care. And the players that do care will probably form teams with other players that do care and in turn mean just win a lot more. Or if they do lose, at least understand why they lose and have a fun time with it. So anyway, guys, that's my video. Please do not try to change my words around and say, this video was just dedicated to hating on Hanzo. No, it was just the fact that I was hating on people. How about that? I'll say that. I was hating on the people that did not care. And I guarantee you, you also hated that too in season 10. But now we won't have to look forward to that because, hey, now we have looking for groups. So I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Tomorrow I'll be telling my own story because it's a lot more than just Overwatch. You'll see why. I love you guys and bye.